Assalamualaikum and very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome back to our class, BAA 4273, the Earthquake and Wind Engineering. Today, we will discuss the topic number four, which is the seismic design of reinforced concrete buildings. I will start in part number one, which is the historical overview. And then we will take a look on the design approach before we go to review for the concept of ductility. The modern earthquake engineering only established around 500 years ago, which is after the devastating 1906 San Francisco and the 1906 Reggio and Messina earthquake. After the 1923 and 1925, the Kento and Santa Barbara earthquake, respectively, experts start to do serious field measurement, damage observation, analysis and lab tests, medical, mathematical modeling, and the development and refi refinement of design code. This is uh, the timeline of the history from 1927 up to 1969, where it start the first seismic code in USA, now only as the UBC. And then they move the, the first and fourth seismic code which is in the Los Angeles city. During the middle 1950, experts or engineers focus on providing the stiffness and strength before the fundamental period of vibration of the T1 start to be taken into consideration in the code in 1952. By 1959, they start to introduce the concept of ductility and the development of ductile structure design had begun on 1969. The leading regions in the design code is Japan, USA, New Zealand and Europe. They use similar philosophy but different uh, design. The design level of earthquake is based on the 500 years written period with 10% probability of occurrence during the 50 years of building lifetime. There are two objectives of seismic design, which is the first one is to protect the human life. And then the second one is to limit the building damage. For the first one, which is to protect the human life, this is to provide the adequate strength and ductility and this one, the, the first objective is for large or infrequent earthquake, which is the 500 years written period, means the magnitude will be quite large. And then uh, this is to prevent, uh, prevent collapse with acceptable damage. That means it's okay for the building to damage, but we must prevent the building from collapse in order to protect the human life. The building will lost, but we still can save the, the human life. And then the second objective is to limit the building damage. This one, we focus on reduce the damage and we minimize the loss of functionality and economic. Means uh, for a shop, uh, let's say the uh, shopping center, it must be be reopened as soon as possible means uh, with very very minimum damage the operation of the shopping center or the business center maybe for the industry can be proceed as usual okay this is what this one is the for small or infrequent earthquake with higher probability of uh, occurrence this one is known as the damage avoid, uh, avoid design. Okay. Maximum displacement and drift are limited by code, by code to control the damage. And the strength are increased let's say, up to 1.5 for special building, let's say for hospital and for school, depend on the code. Then let's take a look on the concept of ductility. Ductility is a measure of 
how far a structure can safely be stressed horizontally after its first element yielding. Plastic hinge region is a area of structures designed to absorb or dissipate energy by yielding. Means, at the in the within the plastic hinge regions, we allow the elements to yield. We have two ductility options, which is low and high, and actually we have a medium. Okay, by using low ductility. We are dealing with higher design force. If you still can uh, remember about the Q, Q factor before. When the Q is high, what happened to the spectral acceleration? Okay, it will reduce. And what happened to the forces? The forces also will reduce. So you refer back to our last lesson, and by using that uh, low ductility options, we are tends to use larger and stronger structural member, less damage and less structural details. However, if we select high ductility options, we will reduce the design force. We use low structural strength. Shallow beam and slender column, it will be more flexible structure, exposed to more damage, however, but with lower construction cost, and it requires special detail in the critical region. Okay, this is the concept of ductility. Let's say this is a model of column. Here is the bottom of the column, and here is the top part of the column. This is the displacement. The displacement will increase. Displacement will increase if the force is increased. And after at the yield point, only small decrement, a small increment of force will cause large increment in deflection. Then the ductility is the Displacement at a limit, uh, ultimate point, up divided by the displacement at the yield point. Okay. So this is what will happen at the stage number one. This is still in elastic range. This is after the element, the column start to yield, and this is the beyond the yield point. Ductile structure is designed using the capacity design approach as the following concept. First, we choose the deflection mechanism so the structure is able to absorb the energy before it deflects to its limit. And then we have to provide the hierarchy of strength where we allow plastic hinge in non critical members. And we, this is in order to prevent the brittle failure. And then we have to provide detailed plastic hinge regions to avoid severe damage and excessive loss of stiffness and strength. As you can see, we have to provide more ties here, okay, more link okay, for better confinement of the concrete. And at the bottom of the column, we provide closer link. Okay, the S is I mean, uh, we have to reduce the, the spacing of the link within the, the critical region. So this is the, we name it as the critical region. Okay, the plastic range. Okay, this, as, as an example, the, the critical region is located near the beam column joint. Okay, let's say it located here, this one, near the joint. Also this one here. Here, here, near the beam column joint. This is known as the critical region. In this region, for seismic design, we provide special detail as we uh, discussed before. Maybe we can 
provide closer spacing of link or shear reinforcement. within the critical region because uh, during the earthquake as i discussed in our last class during the earthquake uh, this region will be very very vulnerable to damage okay the, the damage always occurred near the beam column joint so that's why this is very very critical we must provide more special uh, i mean more speed reinforcement Okay, then thank you so much for your attention. This is the end of this part. In the next part, please prepare your knowledge with the importance classes, importance factor, seismicity cases, and ductility cases. That's all. Thank you so much. See you again soon.